Hello. So for assignment four, I've decided to make a presentation on finding free to use content for digital projects. And this kind of came about as an extension to the RIP, Remix, and Feed activity we did earlier on in the course. I'm grounding this presentation in this idea of digital literacy, that students should be able to critically consume information and share across time and space, co-create and collaborate to solve problems, and maintain flexibility in the information age. And this idea of digital literacy is closely related to multiliteracies, which we talked about in this course. And this is the idea that linguistic diversity is very important nowadays, and also multimodal expression. The New London Group article stated that a primary function of education is to prepare all learners to participate fully in public, community, and economic life. Legal scholar Lawrence Lessage would say that these tools of creativity, the accessibility to the internet and having your own personal laptops, are actually tools of speech for the new generation. It is a new literacy for this generation. And when we talk about digital literacy, I think that is the new literacy. It's what's happening with these kids these days. And if you go on YouTube, it doesn't take long to find these examples of remix culture. Lots of mashups, um, dub overs. Uh, there's lots of video examples out there of today's generation taking bits of information and remixing it in a new way as a form of communication in itself. However, in today's world, a lot of information is also not accessible because of copyright laws, and this just comes down to money in the end. Lawrence Lessage continues that technology means you can now do amazing things easily, but you couldn't easily do them legally. So I wanted to dive further into this idea and understand uh, how I can help teachers at my school find uh, content to use and help the kids find multimedia uh, resources when they're doing projects. So the first thing I want to know about is when copyright is okay. And I think this comes down to good versus bad copying. And you'd think there'd be more advanced terms for this, but in a lot of the literature it really is referred to as good versus bad copying. And I think what they mean is are you copying something verbatim? In that case that is piracy and that isn't legal and perhaps shouldn't be. Um, or are you taking information and changing it and adding creativity to make something new? And I think that distinction is really important because one of them is a new form of communication and the other is just taking something and copying it likely for profit. Now one of the ideas that I didn't understand was fair use. So many teachers I talk to say, oh, copyright doesn't matter in the schools because we're covered by fair use. And I learned that this is sort of a misconception because fair, fair use, which is um, means you don't need permission or payment um, from the copyright holder, if you're doing a criticism or a news report, teaching or research, um, it sounds like this would cover teachers, but fair use is actually an American law. So that's why perhaps it's it's so common in our it's in our lexicon because um, we're so exposed to American pop culture. Um, these terms kind of carry over, but there is no fair use in Canada, and there is no fair use in Hong Kong, which is where I'm based. So then I want to dive into this idea of things being public or not. Um, when we have some younger kids at our school remixing content um, and they're not posting it publicly, we're not as strict with the copyright guidelines as if we were having students create a project to post on a public blog. 
So if it's password protected, I think some of these rules um, aren't as strict. Now, if you're an educator, if you're a parent, if you're around kids, you know that it's when you say do as I say, not as I do, it doesn't really work because those kids are always looking up and they're always watching what you're doing. You're really a model to them. And I think the same is true for copyright information. If we're saying you don't use copyrighted content, but then we ourselves use copyrighted content in our lessons and in projects we do, then that's the true lesson that the students are going to learn from us. So I believe not teaching copyright for media creation is like not teaching plagiarism for writing. I think it's important for students uh, these days to understand what is and isn't okay to take from the internet in the same way that we would teach them not to take direct quotations from a book without using the proper punctuation. And so I've come up with this sort of traffic light system to teach the teachers about how to find uh, content online. So the green light is public domain, and this is things where the copyright has expired or people have said this is free to use, you can use, you can do whatever you want with it. So if you see this symbol, we say green light, go ahead, do anything. The yellow light is Creative Commons. Now Creative Commons is a list of labels that authors or artists can put on their work so that you understand what is and isn't okay to do with their work. And finally, copyright. If things are copyrighted, that's the red light. We shouldn't take it. The author or artist has uh, claimed their work as something they don't want anyone else to take. So the green light and the red light are quite easy symbols. It's the yellow area in the middle that gets a little confusing. So that's what we'll go over next. So here are the Creative Commons labels. And there's four main labels. One is attribution, meaning you can use my work, but you have to credit me. The second one is no derivative works, which means you can use my work, but you can't change it in any way. You can't make a parody of it. You can't kind of mash it up. The third one is share alike, meaning you can use my work, but then whatever you create with my work, you then have to put out into the world with the same label of letting other people take your work. So it's sort of this passing, paying it forward kind of uh, idea. And the final one is non-commercial. So you can use my work, but you can't make any money off it. So all the labels on the left-hand side are just the different combinations of those symbols. Now one of the first places where I'm going to send the teachers is the Creative Commons search engine. And I didn't really know about this until before the course, but it's a really easy way to find Creative Commons uh, work without really have to going through go through filters and things like that. So you can just put in the word into this search engine and then choose whether you want music or images um, and it sort of does the work for you. So I think this is probably the first place I'm going to send students and teachers when they're looking for content. Another really easy way to search for content is through Google Advanced Search Options. So if I were to search for a picture on Google Images, on the right hand side there's a search tool button and from there you can actually choose usage rights. The ones that I recommend and am going to recommend for the teachers are labeled for reuse and labeled for non-commercial reuse. I think you'll get the most results um, and be able to still take the images and, and use them in their own work. 
There's also a built-in research tool in Google Slideshows. Now my school runs on a Google domain so we use these tools uh, quite frequently so the kids are quite familiar with this tool already. And what's great about this is if you're searching for images for a slideshow you can actually filter by free to use and then drag and drop pictures right into your slideshow and it automatically cites them. So we've used this um, with students who are quite young in the grades as well and they're perfectly capable of using this tool. I'm a big icon person. I like symbols and one of my favorite websites to go to is Icon Finder. There's a lot of free icons um, that you can find on this website um, that are copyright free. And if I'm making movies or I'm getting the students to make movies, I often send them to Vimeo because Vimeo has a whole Creative Commons section um, and you can filter their videos by specific Creative Commons labels. So after I teach students or teachers about how to use Creative Commons, um, this is a great place to go because it kind of emphasizes and reinforces those labels that I went over earlier. And a tool that I feel is underused but is really great is YouTube Video Editor. Um, YouTube terms state that you're not supposed to download the YouTube videos, so we don't encourage our students to download YouTube videos to get clips um, for movies that they're making. But what they can do is use the YouTube built-in editor, which allows you to take any YouTube video and splice them together, and then you export your finished video straight to YouTube. So it's sort of a workaround to downloading a YouTube video, editing it on external uh, software. YouTube allows you to just do that right through their built-in editor. Now I've been gathering different sites to find music and sound effects and uh, you know background sounds and that for for videos that we make at this school. The CC Mixter, which uh, I actually learned about through this course, has is a great resource that I now really recommend to a lot of people at the school. But here's just kind of a rundown of my favorite music and sound effect websites. And finally, now that I've learned more about the Creative Commons and I've been working with teachers to really encourage students to, to find free to use content for their multimedia projects, the final stage is getting the students to actually create their own Creative Commons license to put on their work so that other people know how their work can be used. And that's one of the great things about using copyright free content is you are the full copyright owner then of your work and you can decide to share it and put it out there in any way that you choose. So the students were pretty excited that they get to make their own label and they have that ownership and pride over their work after we went through some of these lessons. Sir Ken Robinson says that students should feel inspired to grow creatively. And I agree with this. And I think at the beginning of the year, I didn't know how to help our students make creative projects, to communicate in this new way uh, using new digital literacy skills. But now that I understand Creative Commons and the copyright laws a little bit more, I feel more confident um, helping the kids grow creatively. So this is my extension project on RIP, Remix, and Feed, and this one